How many of y'all know there's never been a season like we've been in, in the last couple of years? Okay, I got a few of you that know what I'm talking about. And, and God has been good to us. I can tell you that in 38 years of ministry, I have never faced more challenges as a pastor and as a leader than I've faced in the last couple of years. And honestly, on a personal level, it seems like the enemy was more intentional. He was more deliberate. He was more organized. But as we mark now, as I told you last week, this is the two-year anniversary of coming out out of COVID in Jesus' name. Yes. I can tell you that God has taken care of us. If you don't believe that, just look around this building today. How many of you know God's taken care of your church? And how many of you say, Pastor, He's took care of me. If God's took care of you, make a little noise in the room. Come on, Palm Coast. Did God take care of you? So I'm about to preach today. This is a dangerous message. Oh, my goodness. Your neighbor's going to get delivered today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Psalms 119, verse 71. Read it on the screen if you don't have it in your Bible. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. It was good for me. I didn't like it, but it was good for me. Exodus 1, 11 and 12. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh supply cities of Pithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew and they were in dread of the children of Israel. I want to preach for just a few minutes along these lines. Tell your trouble, thank you. Oh, some of y'all are already ahead of me. Tell your trouble, thank you. Tell your trouble, thank you. Hey, devil, I know you thought it was going to destroy me, but all I can say here today is thank you. <laughs> Tell your trouble, thank you. Just announce it to everybody on your road. Just tell your neighbor, say, tell your trouble, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many of y'all feel that breakthrough word already? Slip up your hands, Palm Coast. Slip up your hands in the room. Hallelujah. Online, just slip up your hands, even at your computer, even at home in front of your TV. And let's pray together. Father, we thank you that all things, Romans 8, 28, work together for our good because we love you and we're called to your purpose. And Lord, we thank you that even though the enemy came against us, we can know honestly that you met us and you have been faithful. So we give you all the glory. Thank you. Trouble, thank you. You didn't defeat me. God used you. So somebody give the Lord an ovation right now. <coughs> All right, be, be seated. I'm glad to tell you today at 58 years old that I'm not up here talking about what I've heard. I'm talking about what I know. God still takes what the enemy means for evil and he turns it for good. Has God ever took what the enemy meant for evil in your life and he reversed the curse and he caused that curse to become a blessing? Oh, I know he's done that for me. The enemy thinks that trouble in the life of a believer is going to wind up destroying him or her. But after all these millennia, the devil is not just plum dumb or some dumb, he's totally dumb. Can I get a witness? He still doesn't understand that God never panics when trouble arises. God's never upset. He's never biting his nails. He's never sitting on the throne saying, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? God will allow trouble sometimes because he knows he will use it and in the end it will bring him glory. 
And here's the truth, y'all. Trouble is often one of God's greatest teachers. He will use trouble to show us who he is and what he's able to do. So for the believer, for the believer, are there any true believers in the room? Okay, wave at me if you're a true believer. Yeah, we, we're not, we are true believers. For the true believer, your trouble is not your embalming room. Come on now. Your trouble is your classroom. That means you're not dying in your trouble and being embalmed. You're getting prepared for new levels to defeat new devils. Hallelujah. <laughs> trouble often is not God's punishment for the believer. It's his preparation for what's new and what's next. Because sometimes God will trouble you in one season because he's getting you ready for a new season. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, the first text that we read uh, we, we talked about Psalms, but I want to move to Exodus. Exodus 1, 11 says, Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. They built for them, they built for Pharaoh supply cities of Pithom and Ramos. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied, <laughs> and the more they grew, and they were in dread of the children of Israel. How many of you want to get so multiplied, so, so blessed that you become a dread to the kingdom of darkness? This particular text, Precious, represents a time when the children of Israel are facing the greatest trouble that they've ever faced. They're enduring trouble and persecution at the hands of their enslavers, the Egyptians. And life had already been hard, but now the Egyptians were making it unbearable. Have you ever had times in your life when you said to yourself, this is a horrible season, but at least it can't get any worse? And then guess what happens? It gets worse. Where are the real people at? Have you ever had times where you said, this is as bad as this is going to get, and then you find out, Lord, have mercy. It, it, it just got worse. And shockingly, we face those seasons. And this is just what Israel was up against. And it's so intense that the Bible describes it as affliction. He said they were enduring affliction. And what is affliction to me? Affliction is trouble on another level. Afflicted in the Bible is an intense word in the original Hebrew text. Afflicted means to be depressed. It means to be cast down. It means to be humiliated, to be mishandled. It means to be torn down with the words of people and others and put down. Can you imagine the Jews in this moment are depressed and downcast? They feel hopeless. They feel humiliated on every level. On every turn, they feel like they're being mishandled. Here they are. They are, they are in this country, and the people who have a authority over them are mishandling them and humiliating them. It's a horrible time when you find yourself in a situation where someone has a hell-inspired agenda against your life. And the reality is some folks can't stand for others to succeed and do well. And it's worse when these folks who hate your success somehow have leadership and authority and influence in your life. What happened there in the time of the Jews is that the Egyptians began to be threatened by the success and growth of the Jewish nation. The Egyptians were afraid. And one of the most painful things a person can endure is to be mishandled by those who have authority in their lives, by those who should be lifting them up, but yet now they're trying to tear them down. What you don't know is in this room, there are many stories of failures and fractions and struggles. There are many stories of friends and family who mishandled you. Are, are there stories in this room of church leaders who mishandle people or even teachers and educators or spouses or parents who mishandled you? You. And the truth is, you don't know everybody's story here today. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know the rejection that they've endured. You don't know the problems. Some of the people that are praising the most radically and dancing the most ferociously have been in the most intense battles and in the most intense fights and under the greatest attack. Come on, Palm Coast. 
And the reality is there's all kind of stories in this room of people who have been humiliated and mishandled. But I've come to say today, because of Jesus, many of us don't look like what we've been through. Oh, my, 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 my. Tell your neighbor, say, I don't look like what I've been through. Come on, if you feel like you don't look like what you've been through, give God a mighty praise right now. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> if you look like what you've been through, you wouldn't be here today. If you look like what you've been through, you would have gave up a long time ago. If you would have looked like what you've been through, you wouldn't be surviving. But here you are today with praise in your mouth, pep in your step, victory in your soul. And you know that the Lord is on your side even when the devil said, I got you. And friends and family wrote you off. Hallelujah. How many of you glad? I don't look like what I've been through. Some of y'all had a rough 2021. Tell everybody in your neighborhood, say, I don't look like what I've been through. Can I get in radical faith? Will you get upset with me if I just make a statement of faith? In faith, I see you in your future, and you look better in your future than you do right now. Who's going to receive that? You look healed. You look free. You look delivered. Oh, I love you, Jesus. See, see, affliction can also mean to tear down with words. Some of the greatest damage that people can do to each other and some of the greatest damage some of us endured and the harm that we endured, the people who did this to us never put their hands on us. Oh, come on now. They never touched us physically. They put their mouth on us. And there's been so much talk in this last season, so many people tearing each other's down. But I've come to tell you today that people's words can't hinder God's power. Yeah. I said people's words don't hinder God's power. And let me just give you a warning. Be very careful about who you put your mouth on. Be very careful about who you talk about in one season because they may be down in one season, but God is not through with them. Whew. Here's what I've come to let you know, Palm Coast. Often, the very ones who are put down by men are raised up by God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said often the very ones who are put down by men are raised up by God. I don't believe it. Well, you better just ask David. Come on now. David was standing there. He, he wasn't even considered to be anointed as king. But guess what had happened? What had happened was that, come on, y'all. The prophet said, is there anybody else? Well, there's the youngest, and he's in the field. Let me tell you, your blessings going to come to you, and there's no devil in hell that can stop it. When men try to hold you down, God still able to raise you up you say well apostle she's my friend she's my home girl me and him are boys <laughs> we, 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 we close listen if you want to know who your friends are check out how they act when you win How many of you know there's some people that like you as long as you're down? That there's some people that are with you as long as you struggle. There's some people that are on your side as long as you're down. But here's what I have decided. I am not going to be a lesser version of myself to make some insecure person feel good about themselves. I have made up in my mind, I'm going, I'm rising, I'm going to the next level. I want to take you with me, but I'm not going to stay down here, beat down by any opinion of yours about who I am in Christ Jesus. Is there anybody here that can say, I'm going to win if I got to win to the despising of others? Now, the Bible said this about affliction. It said the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and the more they grew. Listen, Palm Coast. They were not defeated by trouble. They were empowered by it. 
and, and, and I love the word from the Hebrew that they used in the text because it says here, precious, that they multiplied. They, they multiplied. And this word multiplied occurs 235 times in the Bible. And when I read that, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, tell my people I'm serious about multiplication. Can I speak in faith that this church is not in a, se in a season of addition? We are in a season of multiplication. How many of you know man adds, but God multiplies? I said, man, adds piece by piece, one here, one there, but only God can come in and multiply your seed sown, multiply your victory. Somebody give God praise if you believe he's a multiplier. <laughs> he, he isn't just a supplier. He is a multiplier. Praise his mighty name. So 235 times we read about multiplication in the Bible. And I want to understand this word. I want to transliterate it. I want to define it from the Hebrew. And multiplied means to become increased, to become greater than you were. Whew. To become increased, to become greater than you were, to become much and to be granted authority. Who's ready to be increased? Are you ready to be increased in your faith, increased in your power, increased in your anointing? How about increased in your resources, increased in your influence? If you're ready to be increased, give God a praise right now. I'm ready for increase. I'm ready for, I said I'm ready for increase. Okay. It literally means that, that you are increased and you are granted authority and you become greater than you were. And here's what I know. It means to become much. And there are times when your much from God might be too much for others. Some of y'all see people praise God and say, that's too much. We, Pastor John, he, what, what does Pastor John sing this? He sing baritone, alto, tenor, bass, or soprano. He sings it all. You know, he, don't that guy have the highest voice you ever heard in your life? I've been working with him. I've been giving him voice lessons, and I'm telling you it is. That, that, that worship team is too much. They dance too much. They shout too much. The, that, 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 those people are too much. They, that their blessing is too much. But don't be lesser blessed because people think it's too much. I am ready to enter into a season where there is such a radical manifestation of the power of God over your life and mine that we don't just have enough, we have too much. Hallelujah. Because... The Bible says that he is Jehovah, and the word Jehovah does not mean the God who is enough. It means the God who is more than enough. And I want to tell somebody he's more than enough of a healer, more than enough of a, of a provider, more than enough of a way maker. Come on, if you believe he's more than enough and you're ready for much. Tell everybody in your neighborhood, say, are you ready? Yes. Say, I'm ready. Yes. Say, this is my too much season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm talking about good things. I'm not talking about drama. Come on, somebody. How many of you are ready for exceedingly, abundantly, far above? Come on. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied, and the more they grew on the other side of this. I'm going to have too much of everything I need. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord, somebody. So, we can honestly say, precious, that these last couple of years were full of trouble in a way we've never even seen trouble. And on some levels, we're still dealing with trouble yet today. 
And if we're not careful, we'll give trouble too much influence over our lives. And we will let trouble control the conversation in our heads. And we will feel like our trouble is greater than our God. And in those moments, trouble will become our tormentor rather than our teacher. And Job found himself right there in a state of unease, a state of anxiety. And in Job 3.26, the Bible said, I am not at ease, nor am I quiet. I have no rest, for trouble comes. Do we have any real people here today? Have you ever had times when you said, I'm just not at ease, I'm not quiet? I have no rest for trouble comes. And the enemy is determined uh, that, that he will continue to rob people of their peace. He wants God's people to have no rest, but he is sadly mistaken. I refuse now to give him space in my head. I am driving that joker out in the name of Jesus Christ. I am not going to have an internal dialogue that talks about defeat and delay and discouragement but I am flipping the script and changing the way I'm thinking and I am declaring I am the head and not the tail I am above and not beneath greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world no weapon formed against me I said no war weapon formed against me shall prosper. Hallelujah. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed coming out. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. The Lord is on my side. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God raises a standard against him. What a mighty God I serve. The Lord is on my side. When men came in, they would have swallowed us up quickly. But our soul escaped just like a bird out of the snare of the fowler. God has been good. I will not allow the dialogue and the conversation in my mind to be defeated. Somebody, if you wanna, if you wanna think victoriously, one, two, three, give God a praise right now. You, you gotta get your thinking healed if you wanna get your life healed. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Now. The enemy thinks that the church is going to lay back like Job did for a season and say, I, I'm not at ease, nor am I quiet. I have no rest, for trouble comes. But he's sadly mistaken. He doesn't know the folks on your road. Come on, Palm Coast. He doesn't know that you are going to see God move in your life and you have a confidence that hell can't even understand. So I'm standing before you today and I'm teaching, tell your trouble, thank you. And as I was sitting down preparing this, I, I put these five things together. And there are five things that I want hell to know. <laughs> as we come out of COVID, <laughs> Come out of this last season, there are five things I want hell to know. Listen, devil. Number one, we didn't lose ground as a church in ministry. We took it. Y'all don't make me come down there. Why don't you get excited collectively about what God has done in your church? Tell everybody, we didn't lose ground, we took it. We gave out over a million pounds of food at our food drops. We were, there, we were there at the racetrack, and they were backed up for miles at one Daytona. Our dream center was love in action. Stand up, Pastor Jamie. How many of y'all love our dream center leader? Stand up, honey. You stand up with him. Come on, give them a God bless you. We were love on another level. 
Our online church exploded, y'all. We went from preaching to hundreds to preaching to tens of thousands. God used it every week. Now we preach to people around the world and across the earth. What did we do? We did whatever we had to do. We preached in tents. I preached on rooftops. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Well, I don't think you did the right thing. But when you pastor your church, you do it the way you want to do it. I was just trying to hear God and do the best I could. And you ought to thank the Lord that I said, Lord, whatever you want to do, I'll preach in a tent. I'll preach on the roof. I'll preach in the parking lot. I'll preach in the church. We preached on tents, rooftops, outdoor stages, and directly into people's homes. And we even had people who sat in their cars and they heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ as I stood on a roof and just said, did we praise the Lord? Yes, we did. We honked the hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to tell you that God took what the enemy meant for evil and he turned it for good. Oh, somebody give him praise if you believe it. Uh, I said give him praise if you believe it. At the beginning of COVID, we had four campuses. Now we've got eight. Are you listening, devil? Thank you. Thank you for the trouble. Thank you for the attack. Thank you for the problems. Because now we, we're twice what we were. Oh, Jesus. At the beginning of COVID, our Orlando campus was meeting in a cafeteria, in a school. By the end of COVID, we have a brand new building in the most desirable part of Orange County. And that church is literally exploding. We went from trying to build a kid's center to completing it debt free. We built a brand new high school wing for our school, debt free. We supported more missionaries than ever. We gave away $350,000 in one Sunday to those who were in need. We, we've remodeled our buildings. We've updated our foyers. We're improving our facilities. We've got better broadcast equipment than we've ever had. We're entering into a building, a new youth center, and we're building it debt free. Thank you. Thank you, devil. You showed us, gave us an opportunity to find out that he really is all that he says he is. We gave to every major worldwide disaster. There wasn't one thing that went wrong in the world that we didn't give to it. We built two brand new churches in Egypt. I need somebody to give God praise. And now, coming out of COVID, we have more money set aside to demolish our debt than we ever have in 25 years of ministry. We're coming out of debt. We're walking into power. We're walking into abundance. I got to tell you, devil, we didn't lose ground. We took it. If you're glad to be in a house where we took ground, give God a praise. Tell somebody in your neighborhood, say, hey, neighbor, you can just sit there, but I got to give God praise. He took care of me this last two years. I, I didn't lose ground. Oh, come on. Did it work for you? Tell him I didn't lose ground. Tell your neighbor, say, I took it. If you feel like you're in a season of taking ground, give God a mighty praise right now. Okay. Number two, we found out the church was oh so much more than a building. Come on, somebody. The devil said, I got them now. People, people won't come to church. 
People are staying in their homes. I got them now. But what did we do? We did whatever it took. And, and so church was not the building. How many of you, nothing's going to happen to this building in Jesus' name. But if this building fell in this week, if it caught on fire, how many of y'all going to find out where we're meeting and you're going to show up? If you know that the church is not the building, the church is the people, give God a praise right now. Here's what God showed us. God showed us that the building doesn't make the church. The church makes the building. Come on now. We did things like America's prayer meeting. Multiplied thousands of people joined us for prayer from literally around the world. And I've come to tell you, if you think the church is a building or a denomination, you are way off base. The church is the people of God living in faith and flowing love in action. Hallelujah. I give God all the glory. I give God all the praise. Number three, are you listening, devil? We discovered that people were not our source. God was and he still is. If God has been your source, I dare you right now to let him know you're thankful. Come on. Hallelujah. Oh. Did he take care of anybody in this last season? I said, did he take care of anybody in this last season? We found out that God as a church remained faithful. Even when church looked different, even when crowds were small, even when buildings were shut down, God showed us I'm still God. None of this is going to stop me. We found out about God's faithfulness to his church and to his people and that God was our source every step of the way. And you know what I want you to know? We called out to him. We said, Lord, we can't do this by ourselves. When all this mess started and all the drama that ensued within myself. I didn't even know what to do, but I called out on the name of the Lord and Jehovah came through. The Bible said, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distresses. Did God answer prayer for anybody in this room this last season? It amazes me because we found out in that moment that people are not our source. God is our source. And let me tell you, that's why you can't let people defeat you because in the end, God is your supply. Folks, I have to praise him. I don't have a choice. When I look here today and see wall-to-wall -wall people, when I look at the balcony full of radical Holy Ghost filled people, come on. When I'm preaching live to Palm Coast, when we've got eight campuses, when God has been so good, all I can say is, look what the Lord has done. Yeah. <sighs> Number four, we found out victory was inevitable because quitting was never optional. Y'all don't make me come down there. I'm telling you, I, we went through a lot, but I never thought about quitting. I never said, I'm going to quit. I said, I'm going to fight. When the enemy came in against us the very first Sunday, and our, we were trying to go online when COVID first hit for that first Sunday, and we were there literally broadcasting, and, the, and, and, the, and, and, and our, our, our web went down, our internet went down, and I, it was like the enemy was working overtime. But let me tell you something. In the middle of discord, disunity, problems, pandemics, and everything else, the devil didn't know that we had made up in our mind that we would not quit but we would persevere and because we did not quit we found out that victory was inevitable because quitting was not optional is there anybody that can say here Jim Rayleigh quitting is not optional in my life I will persevere tell your neighbor say I'm glad I didn't quit 
Yeah, and now tell that same neighbor, I'm glad you didn't too. Anybody glad that you didn't quit even when you felt like quitting? Come on, it's not a sin to feel like quitting. All of us have felt like quitting. But how many of you are glad to know that even when you could have quit, you didn't quit? And who would admit that God has been good? See, the devil came against our health. He succeeded on so many fronts, assaulting so many. He came against peace, unity, purpose, finances, gathering, and more. But some of us didn't quit. Some people did quit. Some churches shut down. More pastors left the ministry than ever before. But we didn't quit and we didn't blink. We kept believing. We kept on preaching. We kept on praising. We kept on honoring God. We kept giving the missions. Come on, somebody. We kept ministering to people. And listen, the enemy came greatly against people's praise. He wanted you in such a situation that you could not even praise God. And the Bible says in Isaiah 7, 6, read this text. It said, let us go up against Judah. Judah means praise. Let us go up against praise and trouble it. And you know what the enemy tried to do in the last season? He's tried to trouble your praise. He's tried to trouble your worship. But there are some here today, you're not stopping praising the Lord. You refuse to stop giving God glory. Just tell your neighbor, he may try to trouble your praise. Tell him. But tell your neighbor, say, praise louder. Yeah, yeah. If the enemy's trying to get you not to praise God, one, two, three, praise louder right now. I'm looking for the people who will praise a little louder, sing a little louder, shout a little louder. My weapon is a melody. My weapon is my praise. My weapon is my shout. My oh, glory to God. Make another shot higher. When I praise the Lord, 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 the more he troubled us, the more we praise the Lord. I said, the more he troubled us, the more we praise the Lord and victory became inevitable because quitting was not optional. And you remember what I said? Our revenge will be revival. As I was writing this message, the Lord spoke to me and he said a big part of your revenge on the enemy is your praise. If you want to punch the devil, Right in the spiritual nose. One, two, three, give God a praise right now. Yes! Hallelujah! Come up here, Pastor John. Give me, get your microphone. One, two, three, praise him a little louder. This is dangerous because if I hand her the mic, I may never get this service back. But I saw a praise all over you just then. And the Lord said, let her come up here and give her a minute just to praise the Lord and lead this whole house in praise. Come on, John. Oh, come on, somebody. Give any reason to praise the Lord. I know I do. Lord, I bless you today. You set me free. You delivered me. You have saved me. You have made me brand new. Lord, you've healed my body. You've healed my family. You've turned situations around. You have protected me from death. You have lifted me out of sorrow. Hey. Lord, I have many things to give you glory and praise for. But most of all, because you are good. Hallelujah. Can you praise him just because he's good? Yeah. I can be good to you in every season of your life. Lord, I bless you because you are 
but everybody on your feet and look at your neighbor and say, tell your trouble, thank you. Number five, say, tell your trouble, thank you. Why do you tell your trouble, thank you? Because it showed us that God was bigger than we thought he was and better than we ever dreamed. I'm I said, God is bigger than you think he is. He's better than you think he is. He's bigger than you think he is. He's better than you ever dreamed. Somebody ought to give him a praise right now. If he's better than you ever dreamed. I feel the Holy Ghost. I said, I feel that cancer rebuke and marriage restore and crack deliverance. I feel a praise in here that's releasing power. And here's what David said. David said, it was good in Psalms that I was afflicted because I learned. Somebody say, I learned. Good means appropriate. Good means beneficial for welfare. Good means prosperity. Good means happiness. Come on now. Somebody shout thank you. Oh, it's working for my good. It's working for my good. Somebody say thank you. All the trouble you've been through, say thank you. Y'all don't make me preach today. Here's what I say to every hater. I hear what I say to everybody who don't believe that God is still moving. Thank you. Thank you for talking about me. Thank you for talking about me on social media. Thank you for excluding me. Thank you for accepting me. Thank you. Thank you for, for pushing me out. Thank you. Thank you for, for walking out on me. Because now I've seen God in my source. Can anybody say thank you? Somebody give God a shout if you can say thank you. Well, oh, I'm going to say it again to everybody who talked about me, thank you. To everybody who said I couldn't do it, thank you. To everybody who said that Calvary was done, thank you. I'm not mad at you. I'm not holding nothing against you. But I want you to come up here and see that this house is in greater revival than it's ever been. And you ain't seen nothing yet. Somebody just shout, thank you. Tell every sleepless night, thank you. Tell every hard time, thank you. Tell every tear, thank you. Tell every problem, thank you. I learned. Thank you. David said it was good that we were afflicted. He said, because I learned, the word learn there means to receive instruction and to become an expert. How many of you became an expert in this last season? You walked through some drama and the stuff that used to make you panic don't even phase you. Now you're like, please devil, shut up. Please devil, you don't have any power. Tell your neighbor, say I'm still here. Yeah, yeah, I learned, I learned, I received instruction. Is there anybody who feels like an expert in going through some of the trouble you've been through? Why don't you become an expert in giving him a thank you right now because you made it? I stand here today and all I can do is tell my trouble to thank you. Now listen, uh, God gave me a word as it relates to the devil. And I'm trying to close. Y'all stay right there because we ain't done yet. I'm trying to close. Uh, the devil just does not comprehend kingdom authority and power and process. He never has and he never will. And see, God gave me this word about the law of sowing and reaping. And he said, Jim, tell the people that even the devil is subject to the law of sowing and reaping. This is an eternal concept. It's a reality in the kingdom and it will not pass away. And here's what the Lord showed me concerning these demonic attacks 
where the enemy came against our peace, he came against our joy, he came against our growth, our healing, our victory, our salvation, our prosperity. He came against revival. He literally sowed so much against the people of God. But there is a law called sowing and reaping. And here's what the, where the Lord took me. He took me to Psalm 716. And he said, you tell the devil, his trouble shall return upon his own head. Oh, Jesus. Somebody give God a praise. Because the devil's trouble is about to return on his own head. Somebody give God a praise that the devil is going to be put down. Good measure, pressed down. He's going to be destroyed. His trouble shall return on his head. I dare you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need about 60 seconds to dance before the Lord, to shout unto God, because the devil is in trouble. Yeah, 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 the devil is in trouble. Hallelujah, Satan thought he calls the church trouble. But now we're about to be trouble on a whole nother level. Y'all, I'm sorry, I gotta have you tell your neighbor one more time. Say, hey neighbor, the devil only thought he calls me trouble. Holler at your neighbor, say, I'm about to be trouble on another level. There's going to be trouble for the kingdom of darkness. Give God a praise. Tell your trouble. Tell your trouble. Thank you. Tell that problem. Thank you. This represents really two years. We had COVID issues. Come on now. We had issues of division and racism. We had issues of political turmoil. Everywhere we turned, the enemy was fighting. But I need to tell you, devil, your trouble that you cause me is gonna return on your whole head. And devil, you sowed bountifully. And the Bible said, he that sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. How many of you in Palm Coast, here in, here, here in Ormond, how many of you want to see God use this trouble to bring the mightiest outpouring of the Holy Spirit we've ever seen in our lives. Somebody right now needs to tell your trouble, thank you. Thank you for the attack, devil. It was good for me. Thank you for the struggle. It was good for me. Thank you, even when they talked about me, you used it. Thank you, even when I got without, you showed me you were a provider. Thank you, devil, that even though it looked like you were winning, it was a setup. Say, are you thanking the devil? Yes, I am. Thank you, devil. All I can say is God will make a way. I look at our church today, and I, I can't admonish you enough, you in Palm Coast, you here, to not miss a single time that we gather. There is something that is nuclear in this house now. How many of you can look around and see Calvary's more than it's ever been? Come on, if you don't see it. And I was telling one of my staff today, it was great before, and I couldn't complain. We had, it was awesome. God took what the enemy meant for evil, 
and he turned it for good. He turned it for good. Somebody slip up your heart and say, God took what the enemy meant for me. Pastor John, come up. Speak with your church. I love you, Palm Coast. Tell your trouble, thank you. You sing it, Gordon. Just you. Somebody raise your hands right now. Sing it over the house. You took what the
believe something has shifted here today. I said, if you believe something has shifted here today. I said, if you believe something has shifted here today. You know what I heard the Holy Spirit say? I heard the Holy Spirit say, there's new wine. Debbie Nichols, get up here. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making. Prepared to go deep, raise your hands down. There's not a drop of hype in this. She just gave something called a message in tongues, and I'm about to interpret it. It's in the Bible. For thus saith the Lord, everything that the enemy meant for evil, I am turning it towards you, and it's going to be fuel for your next season. The enemy was celebrating, but he celebrated prematurely. The enemy was throwing a party, but he was partying pre prematurely. He did not understand that I know the end from the beginning. And every attack that he brought against you was going to become my opportunity to defeat him on your behalf. So the Lord would say unto you today, why are you worried? Why are you weary? Don't be downcast. Don't be uptight. Haven't I come through before? The Lord would say, haven't I made a way before? The devil is underneath your feet because he's underneath mine. The enemy has been defeated by you because he is defeated by me. So I instruct you now as my people says the Lord that you will not stand anymore in a state of panic, depression, or anxiety. But you will rise up knowing that you can tell your trouble thank you because I use your trouble to show you how big I am. Prepare your hearts now for outpouring. Prepare your hearts for revival. Every attack of the enemy will come back on his head. Every act of resistance, every act of rebellion, it's going to come back on his head. I am pouring out my spirit in a fresh way. I'm doing it on your sons and daughters. I am raising up a generation of fire and power. I'm using old people and young people and families and mothers and fathers, all races, all backgrounds, all colors. Oh, please, give me praise now, because I used it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, make me a Where there is new wine, there is 
down my old flames carry on call it fire call it fire somebody say that again I lay down my old flames Come on, I need to say it one more time. If you're willing to do that, raise your hands and say it now. So somebody give the Lord the praise of the day. Come on. That's good. If you want to shout like he just shouted, everybody shout. I'm not afraid of it. Come on, I've been preaching and shouting the whole service. I want to hear you shout right now. Under God with a voice of triumph. Come on. So, here's what, here's what the Bible said. It was good that we were afflicted because we learned. And then in Exodus it said the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. You ready to multiply and grow with me? How many, how many of you are ready to see more people saved in your church than you've ever seen? So, remember the laws of sowing and reaping. The enemy sowed so much the last two years. How many of you are ready to see him reap? You know what's going to come back? He sowed discord and disunity. Unity's coming back. He sowed fear. Faith is coming back. He sowed trouble. Revival is coming back. So here it is, precious, and I'm almost done, but I'm going to speak it over you now. Slip up your hand. Some of you, the warfare's been in your house. I feel a breakthrough for your son. That's what I feel. You know. But I feel like somebody needs a breakthrough in your family. I declare that in this next season, God is going to surprise you in the ways that he turns it around. And you'll look back on this last season, and God will heal it so completely within your family. And things will change so radically with your children, with your mate, with your family that you will look back at that season that you were in and say, thank you, Lord, you used it. I declare in faith that God is going to raise up not just a youth ministry or a young adult ministry. I declare, stretch your hands out toward him, that God is raising up a movement. Hallelujah. We are not going to just have motion. We're going to have movement. Hallelujah. So God, we raise up our hands now and we ask you to seal your word in this room. Seal it online with your people. We give your name all the glory. Somebody give God a mighty praise. Hallelujah. Thanks for watching the message. I'm sure this spoke to you. Here's what I want you to do. Why don't you subscribe to this YouTube channel? That way, every time there's a new message, you'll get to hear it. Also, many of you have watched this. Some of you watch on a regular basis. Why not take time and so You can give at calvaryfl.com. You can give on your phones, and you can be a part of helping us take this message around the world, the message of hope, the message of Jesus Christ. Can't wait to see you back here real soon.